Hello and welcome to the Shared Libraries tutorial on identifying popular and scholarly sources. By the end of this video, you should know the differences between popular and scholarly sources and when to use each in your research papers and projects. You'll also learn about the peer review process, the process by which many scholarly journals publish their articles. Let's go to the library's research tutorial guide. It's called Introduction to Academic Research, and it can be found by visiting the library's webpage and clicking on Subject and Course Guides in the Quick Links menu. From here, we'll click on Introduction to Academic Research under Research Tutorials. There's a lot of information in this guide, but for this particular tutorial, we'll click on the Popular versus Scholarly tab. Every source you find will fall into one of three categories, Popular, Scholarly, or Trade. There are many differences between these three categories. However, if you look at three main areas, you can usually determine fairly quickly whether the information you found is popular, scholarly, or trade. Let's start with trade sources. I'm not going to go into great detail about these types of sources since they often aren't used in research papers, but just to give you a quick definition, trade sources, which are publications put out by industries or professional organizations, are written for industry professionals. They are sometimes news bulletins, sometimes magazines, which give updates about the goings-on in certain fields or industries. For instance, the publication American Libraries is a trade magazine put out by the American Library Association. It's written for librarians and people working in libraries, and the articles are usually also written by librarians. It updates librarians on the latest trends and news in the library world. These types of publications do not contain actual research articles and really aren't that useful for most research papers. Popular sources are sources of information written for the general public. These can include popular books, think Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Hunger Games. They can also include newspapers. All newspapers are considered popular sources because they're written by journalists for a general audience, and they're written in such a way that everyone can understand. Popular sources also include popular magazines. Think of the magazines you encounter when you're out and about. Popular magazines are those that you see when you're standing in the checkout line of the grocery store. They also include most of the magazines you would find at stores like Books a Million and Barnes and Noble. Some good examples of popular magazines include People, Us Weekly, Time, Newsweek, National Geographic, Popular Mechanics, O Magazine, and Better Homes and Gardens. Notice that all of these magazines cover a wide range of topics. The topic of the magazine has no bearing on whether it's popular or scholarly. How the information is presented, who it's presented for, and who is writing the information will determine whether or not something is popular or scholarly. Popular magazines tend to have shorter articles, many times just one or two pages in length. They are easy to read, possibly entertaining or persuasive, and they do not use a lot of complicated words or jargon. They rarely contain a list of references at the end of the articles, and they tend to be full of pictures, advertisements, catchy headlines, and visually appealing fonts. The authors of popular magazines are usually journalists or freelance writers and they are not experts in the field about which they are writing. Scholarly sources are sources of information written for scholars and experts. These can include books published by university presses and scholarly journal articles. Scholarly journal articles are usually much longer than popular articles, sometimes 30 pages or more. They also usually contain headings like introduction, methods, conclusions, discussion. And they almost always have an abstract in the beginning, which tells you in a paragraph what the article is about. They also usually contain an extensive list of references at the end of the article. The authors of scholarly journals are experts and scholars, usually in the field about which they are writing. And their audience is an audience of other experts. So with scholarly publications, we have experts writing for other experts. And because of this, the authors use a lot of jargon. Jargon is a specialized language or vocabulary unique to a field or industry. So if you're in that field or industry, you speak that language. 
But as a student, you don't yet know the jargon of your own major, let alone the jargon of another field. So scholarly articles can be difficult to read. You might have to look words up in a dictionary, and you'll definitely have to take your time when reading these articles. But it's very much worth it to use scholarly information because it's the best of the best. I want to talk a little bit about the peer review process at this point. Most scholarly journals, but certainly not all of them, use the peer review process in order to publish their articles. Through this process, articles are given to a group of peer reviewers to evaluate and examine before publication. Peer reviewers are experts in the subject of the article. So, for example, if a herpetologist, someone who studies reptiles and amphibians, has completed research and written an article on the Tennessee cave salamander, and they submit their article to the Journal of Herpetology, the journal will have a group of peer reviewers made up of other herpetologists and other experts on salamanders to evaluate the article, looking for flaws in the author's research and looking to see if the author adds anything new to the conversation on Tennessee cave salamanders. If they decide to publish the article, they will usually ask the author to make changes or revisions before publication, and the author and peer reviewers may go back and forth for a while before the article is ready to be published. This can take a year or more. So if you're writing about a current or hot topic, you might not be able to find peer-reviewed information on your topic. You might have to use popular sources such as newspaper articles or magazine articles. Last, I want to quickly mention that not everything in a peer-reviewed journal is actually peer-reviewed. Letters to the editor, commentary, book reviews, editorials, news and updates, viewpoints, none of these are peer-reviewed content, but they all appear in peer-reviewed journals. So take care to stay away from this type of content when looking for information on your research article. If the content is short, say only a couple of pages, chances are it's not really peer-reviewed, it's probably just a book review. If you'd like more information about the peer review process, our research guide has a great video from North Carolina State University. And if you'd like to know more about the differences between popular and scholarly and trade sources, check out the links on the side as well as the video at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching the library's online tutorial on popular and scholarly sources. In the next video in our series, you'll learn how to use the library's website to find sources of information on your topic.